Okay. Here we go. Um. <clears throat> okay, so we are about to start right now, and uh, like so stressful. <laughs> So the topics we are going to be discussing, uh, we have parenting, education in Nigeria, science and religion, how to choose a career, then mindset, money, and success. Okay? Uh, before we start properly, I will always read some quotes to you guys watching right now. If you are watching this video on Facebook, hit the subscribe button. So you see um, the uh, my official uh, podcast. Uh, if you are watching on Facebook, I will always share five minutes of this podcast on Facebook. So if you want to watch a complete um, video, you better um, click on the um, YouTube link there so to access the complete video. So um, for today, I have some quotes for everyone right now. And number one, it says the starting point of all we're about to start right now. You can use this time to relax, okay? Um, the starting point of all achievement is desire. Weak desires bring weak results. Just as a small fire produces a small amount of heat. Without desire, there is no fire. Two, imagination is everything. Three, learning something new each day, whether in books, articles, etc., could be life changing if you do it consistently. Four, if you can see far, you might go far if action is not excluded. Um, five, God said, I will give you as far as you can see. Six, your mind is the brain at work according to neuroscience. Seven, your daily choices, if bad, could have or leave an indelible mark on your future. Eight, if you don't plan for the life ahead, or your future then don't complain when you um when you start getting anything contrary to what you want nine fighting for what you want then what you don't want we always like to stay around you okay so this is all we have right now for the first part uh we are about to start properly okay so Patrick, the first we have here is parenting uh, a big topic parenting okay parenting okay parenting so what's parenting to you first this is my drink okay like i tell you i'm working on this stuff okay and now i if you watch the previous podcast i think i'll leave the link um in the description of this video on youtube so you watch the previous podcast okay if you watch the previous podcast you see where i opened this drink okay in the video so um i want to give an update okay i have worked on it to the extent i now have um my own equation okay a chemical a chemistry equation to help predict um 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 what's going on here okay so but i haven't really tested the equation i i have now but one thing i have been able to discover is this when i put this uh, let's see what is inside here right now when i put it in ordinary water okay that is neither hot or cold i discovered that the reaction was um it still gave me the intended result but when i used hot water the, the reaction became faster so meaning temperature is like a factor affecting my food drink so that's what i have discovered and this really really true it's working really well if i use hot water now within within um eight hours the can will start to swear but if i use ordinary water let's say um to take up to 40 uh, 24 hours completely before it starts to swear so you see the difference so that's what i've gotten for this stuff right now so before we start right now you still have some time to relax Five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. So, what's parenting? For me, parenting is basically the act or the process of raising children so that from childhood to adulthood. But in a sense, for me, parenting is basically parents are like guides. Okay. The children are like foreigners in a particular country. Okay. They are new to that place, they have never been there before, they are like fishes out of water. <laughs> parents now are, let's say, 
there are any genes of the land. <laughs> we have already had an understanding of what is going on all around that particular environment. Okay. So now it is now the job of the parents to actually teach the children what to do and what not to do based on their own experiences or based on their own interactions or whatever they have gathered from living in that particular environment. The okay. parents now are like guides, are guides teaching and training children based on their own knowledge okay you are free to talk at length okay you are you're free we have enough time for today okay so that's what you think parenting is right now the last one we did that didn't yes. obviously come out the video just got deleted right it's so painful we put a lot of information in that one so we talked about the difference between curiosity and disobedience like you try to explain that um, children, when they are growing, are not usually disobedient, right? They are curious. But parents mistake the curiosity, um, like this, this, this child is stubborn. The parent does not, does not even ask, does not give a second thought of um, what if this child is curious? Like this kind of thing. So I want to explain the difference right now. So why do you say a child could be curious instead of being stubborn? Curiosity is simply like an appetite of the mind wanting to learn, wanting to know more. So, like I said, children, they are foreigners. They don't really know what is going around or what is happening. So the mind now needs to get an understanding of the particular environment that they are in. Probably, you could tell the child is TTF, but the child, you see the child always wondering. The child is not just, for most of the time, the child is not just a stubborn. The child is trying to find out, okay, what is that thing I just saw in the stand of? What is that particular thing over there? Or what is that over there? Even though sometimes you could tell the thing, but you see the child going there. The child is the child brain trying to figure out, okay, what is this particular thing that they say I should not touch? Or probably there's something that caught the child's eye about it. Or let's say a keyboard, for example. The child will be trying to feel how the keys, like push the keys. How do they feel? What is this thing made of? That's why these are children, most of the time, they are basically raising things eating them on the ground, licking them. <laughs> they are just trying to get a solid and all-round understanding of what everything is. They are trying to learn. Okay. That is curiosity. Okay. Why stubbornness is, stubbornness is in the sense that probably the child already knows that, okay, you should definitely not do this. Like, he already has an understanding of that particular understanding of that particular situation. Okay. But he goes ahead and does it out of his own his own compulsion or uh, will, like probably he's just trying to go against the parents' wish. So that is stubbornness. So curiosity now is the mind wanting to learn. Why stubbornness is the mind wanting to push against, let's say, instructions when it already knows why that particular thing should not be done or why this particular thing should be done. Okay, that's beautiful. You said curiosity is appetite to learn, like. Is that appetite innate in all humans? Like, is that appetite yes, yes, in yes. I think curiosity is in everybody, but the level of curiosity varies from person to person. Again, like I said, curiosity is an appetite. The hungrier you are, the more you would most likely consume. So, curiosity in most people, particularly in adults or among the older population, is suppressed because they most people are the older they get they feel like they already know enough or they don't need to learn more so if you already know too much if you think you already know too much there's no need to learn more so curiosity now is available in everybody but it is particularly at the level of curiosity in children is the strongest because again they don't know anything they don't know how anything works they are just still trying to figure out okay where am i like newborn babies you will see them they are they don't stop for some time. They are just looking around trying to get, okay, who is this? What is that? What is this? So curiosity now, it is, yeah, level of curiosity is higher in younger children or in children than in the older population. We are still some curious old people, but they are very, very few. Okay. Wow, that's beautiful. Um, so, can you explain, you said um, many people are not curious because they feel that they already know everything, right? 
So, okay. So is there a dif is there any difference between you going completely out of manuals? Because you understand this thing if you are trying to bring something from scratch. Let's say the phone. This phone was invented, right? Everything you see was created, and it existed in the mind before it became something physical. So if you are trying to bring something from your thoughts to reality, you understand that there's some time you need to go out of manuals. Like you need to go completely out of manuals. But before then, you have to read a lot. Okay, then there is some period you go out of manuals. So is this the same thing like going out of manuals does it mean your curiosity is going down? No, your curiosity is not going down. So let's say like when you mean going out of manuals, I mean like living the like living the normal process that people normally follow. Okay. Okay. So, let's say you living the normal process that people normally take or living the normal route does not mean your curiosity is going down per se. So a lot of times we are trying to create something from scratch. Like something that has we are trying to do something that has never been done before. Mm -hmm. There is a high possibility that there's not even going to be any manual or any procedure yeah. to do that. <laughs> so now you have to rely on creating the manual while you are still trying to achieve the goal. Okay. So creating the manual now or creating the procedure the guide now, that is I think that is the most difficult stage that many people fail to really achieve. So for your curiosity now to move beyond the normal stage. Basically curiosity again is like is for if once you are curious, there's no manual. Okay. Because you are your mind is basically trying to get an understanding of how everything works. So your mind now is trying to learn about how the whole process from start to finish. Okay. Okay, that's really, really clear. So I hope those watching now know the difference between when your trust is going down and when you are going out of manuals because if you are trying to really really bring something from thoughts to reality. You understand that you need to go out of manuals. In fact, you won't find any manuals. You won't find any. Okay, but I think that correct me if I'm wrong. I think they've they've trained certain let's say um, people or um, to actually be on this let's say um, mindset of wanting to bring something from their thoughts into reality. Why they've trained certain kind of certain people like let's say the white, black, brown people, why they've trained certain of them to appreciate the the physical results that um let's say the people that they train to think, okay, that they actually bring out. For instance, take the white man. The white man, sorry to say if you're watching this video one. Um there's someone someone says something, said the white people just produce we black people all we need to do is buy from them like what do you, how do you see that kind of statement is it that the train is it that let me ask you is it that they train the white people to actually know how to bring thoughts into reality then the black people to actually eat the results so what's there i don't think it's training i think it is an encouragement okay yeah. so like white people are more encouraged to actually be innovative Okay. Than actually, than many people here in Africa, here in Africa, to be innovative or to think new ideas or to come up with a new way to do something, it is not encouraged. Because again, many one thing that I have noticed in Africa is that a lot of the other population they feel like okay, for every single thing there is just one way to accomplish every single task. Mm -hmm. Any task that is not that is not popular, that is not the task at all. So for them, there is just one way. To heaven, and <laughs> one straight single path. That is just one straight path. There's no deviation from that path. So there could be other ways to accomplish a solution. Okay. But for Africa, it is that or trying to find that one way for people to even try to leave that straight path to get something unique. Okay. They are not encouraged. Most of them, they are even fought against in Africa. So why in the white? Let's say in the Western uh, yes. part of the world, yeah, it's yeah. it actually encouraged. Uh, also, one thing that you need to notice is that it may not always like this. There was a period during the history of uh, white people, they called it Dark Ages. Then, barely anything was invented, or almost like 
there was just this low, uh, how would I put it? There was this reduction in the levels of innovation and invention during that period. But after the Dark Ages came in uh, the Renaissance period, then there was like this bust of inventions, innovations, and all these things. Mm -hmm. After the Renaissance came the Industrial Age, which brought the fourth uh, industrialization of society. So, as all, all during this period, during the period of Renaissance and industrialization, more and more people have been getting encouraged to actually go to invent new things to solve particular problems in society. Like before that period, before the industrial age, if you wanted to move around, you needed horses. Okay. So during that age that they invented the steam train, the steam engine came in steam train and steam most of the things then were becoming powered by steam. Then after that came the discovery of electricity. Mm. After the discovery of electricity came a uh, combustion engines that is cars that we see today. Mm. So in a sense mm. they were now becoming encouraged. They were not becoming too trained because there's no way to really train somebody to to be innovative. You can only inspire the person, you can only encourage the person that okay, this is your dream and you can probably provide resources or talk to the person or there are ways to actually encourage innovation. But I don't think it's trend. But here in Africa there's almost this you are saying that any new dream that comes up or probably any innovative idea, it is either it is not bad or people actually try to go against the idea actively. Okay. So let's jump over to the mindset now because I love talking about mindset a lot, okay? So that's what we are ready to now. So you said something that in Africa most of the ideas are not backed up. But can you tell me who actually supported Mark Zuckerberg with money when he was building Facebook? Did his government support him? Support must not necessarily come from the government. Okay. I say it can come from your family, it can come from your friends, it can come from people around you. But here in Africa, very few people support. I don't. When I mean support, I don't necessarily mean support only from the government. Support okay. also from the government. Okay. Because again, the government they have their other things to do. Mm. But support could come from the government, and if governments want their countries or their economy to move forward, they need to start supporting the innovation. That's true, so that's true. Also, apart from the government, individuals mm. can also support the innovation. I think okay. somebody has a brilliant idea on how to stop the power outage in Nigeria. There is almost in, I think I've seen these past few weeks or past few months, I've seen a number of ideas that okay, could actually, if the government or a particular individuals actually through their support or invest into this particular project in Nigeria here, okay. they could solve particular issues like, I think I saw one video of a guy in the north, he invented a cooker that uses hydro, that uses, uh, breaks down water into oxygen and hydrogen. Wow. So, in the world now, uh, as people are looking to move away from fossil fuels like yeah. and petrol, yes. they are now looking into electric cars and cars powered by hydrogen. Yeah. So, if there's a, now, there's, in the future, there will be a market for hydrogen. Yeah. Has already discovered a cheap, the solution that I created was cheap and for, if it could be easily upscaled to, like, if investors come in, they can easily large build upon that simple technology to supply that great demand in yeah. the future. Yeah. But now, I think it was shown on NTA. But again, the, most of these things, like, they just get highlighted and all of a sudden they most get forgotten in the background. Okay. These are actual solutions to society. Because That's now, true. Uh, even Nigeria, uh, apart from exporting, mm. let's say, the technology or okay. even hydrogen, uh. because hydrogen now is still, mm. apart mm. from exporting the technology or the fuel, it could still start up the local market here in Nigeria. Okay. Nigeria could now be looking to develop hydrogen cars. Or, I think I saw one of where you guys use it. An electric racing car. Again, electric cars are the future since climate change is happening. Our countries, even Nigeria, said is looking to move away from uh, this over dependence on fossil fuels. Yeah. So if individuals or governments now support all these ideas, those are solutions to problems. It's not just government. Government. There are people in Nigeria that could actually. But again, for many of these investors to 
actually see uh, how would I put it that like, for them to see promise in those particular fields, the government has to be a leader first. Like a leader of a particular place, they have to show that okay, this is the direction to which we are heading. Then other people will start to say, okay, probably before the leader says that something is there, there should be something there. So the government now has to lead to innovation. It must not be only the government, but the government has to increase their investment into these different areas to spark interest into private investors. Okay, <clears throat> that's that's a brilliant one. That's a brilliant one. Okay, that's a brilliant one. Okay, um, because there is this um, do you watch wrestling? Okay, now if you go to some people and tell them wrestling is fake, what they are going to tell you is it can't be fake. Okay, what they are going to tell you is it can't, it can't be fake. They are going to try to support or protect the image of the wrestling. I think that's where the support comes in, okay? And I think that that's where the support comes in. But, okay, I think that's where the support comes in. So I agree with you on that, on that one. I agree with you on that one. So, let's go over to, um, I think this is the first 20 minutes right now. You gotta take a break right now. We'll call you back in the next three to five minutes, okay? So when you come in, Next, we'll talk about education in Nigeria. We'll ask some questions on parenting before we go back to the remaining ones, okay? So you can call it quits now. Okay. So, um, we have to continue from where we stopped. But before we go on, I'd like to um, talk a little bit about two of my courses, okay? And uh, like I said, I sell digital products. This is Igor Science. If you're watching this video for the first time, or YouTube algorithm decide to pick this video to you. Uh, you're watching it right now, or you can subscribe to this to this channel. Okay, like I said, digital products. Okay, digital simply means online products. Okay, like ebooks, audiobooks, online courses too. Okay, so I have a PayPal course. If you are in Nigeria, um, I can teach you how to set up your PayPal account that can receive and send money worldwide. If you have a PayPal account, your life is almost changed for good, okay? Because you can work worldwide with companies like cplead.com. That's where you can and offervote.com. You can find a lot of there that will just give you cool box if you are ready to work online. So it's real. Now, does Nigeria, I, I, we don't know if Nigeria accepts paper. Many people are confused whether if uh, whether or not Nigeria um, um, recognize PayPal. Okay, so let me give you right now a valid proof that Nigeria actually recognize PayPal. Although, if you open your uh, PayPal account with Nigeria, um you are going to be able to send payments but you can't receive payments okay but if you take my paper course i'll teach you how to receive payments link your card i'll take you through the process okay how to change your pin on your credit card those are stressful process okay but i can simplify everything for you if you are watching right now and uh, from this stuff right now this is my paper stuff right now you can see it and down here you will see this card is used for OCT flow. Just want to see it so you believe. OCT flow, original credit transaction flow from platforms such as PayPal, ETC. Okay, so you can see that this card, this credit card right now, that's higher, but I will teach you how to get yours for free. Okay, um, it's recognized. Okay, in Nigeria, and you can use it to set up your PayPal account. Okay, that's what I have done. So my PayPal course will help you actually do yours too. Okay, so I'm reducing the price right now for my PayPal course. Expensive, but for the first 30 people, you are gonna get it for 500 naira. Okay, I have a site where I will give to you. I will just give you the site link. You will just go there and watch all my videos there. If you have any questions, you ask your questions. Then I come on camera again to make specific videos to answer your questions. So it's 500 naira for that for the first 30 people. Then I have a YouTube course. If you uh, if you want to start a YouTube channel, presently I have 150 videos on my YouTube channel. Okay, many people don't actually understand YouTube. Okay, um, the son of Eric Thomas he said something. He said his video was not getting any views until he got up to a hundred plus videos. 
before YouTube algorithm decides to select this video. Once YouTube algorithm can start picking your videos, okay, your life can change because YouTube actually pays people every month, okay, if you can monetize your YouTube channel, okay. So by just making videos, you could make money for yourself too on YouTube, okay. But it's not easy if you don't understand the process and the steps, okay. Someone said, a popular man, an entrepreneur, he said something, he said I had up to 1,000 tweets on Twitter before I started getting massive views. Many people don't want to go through the process when it comes to success, but they want the result. You have to go through the process, okay? So my YouTube course is going to simplify everything. I will teach you the rules on YouTube. I will teach you everything. I will create thumbnails and many other important things, okay, that you need to know, okay? So I'm saying to, I'm, just, I'm still reducing the price for this YouTube course for the first 30 people you are going to get it for 700 naira. I have all videos on my private site where I'll give to you to watch as soon as you pay right now so check the description of the video right now if there's a link there you pay there's no link all you need to do is right now comment so I reach you and you get started with this stuff I want to teach you copyright laws creative commons and many other stuff in YouTube I've done it for people okay the first person who took my YouTube course is now having 67 plus subscribers now so don't joke with this stuff right now I can put it through I can take it through the process so let's go Secondly, we have um, okay. Let's we'll come back to parenting. I have just one uh, question for parenting, okay? But let's go over to education in Nigeria. Now, what do you think is the problem with the education we have here in Nigeria? Yeah, let's be specific. Be specific. So, if you are watching this video from another country, like yeah, you can just learn, okay? Talk about what's happening in your country. Nobody's gonna kill you, okay? So, so let's discuss it, right? Education in Nigeria. So, so I think the main problem with education in Nigeria is that the standards. Okay. And there are some standards too, but there is no enforcement of those standards. Standards in the sense that minimum requirements that educational institutions should pass or they should surpass in order to let's say be recognized as an educational institution. For example, some schools don't have laboratories, some don't have computer labs, some don't have things that they don't that they need to really operate or to even teach the children in the first place. Then next the next thing that is missing from the whole educational system is that there's no lack of let's say proper investment to actually bring keep whole educational system in line with the educational system of, of uh, countries around the world. So in a lot of ways, the educational system in Nigeria is really backward. Like most of the schemes are backward. Most of the most of most of what are being taught or the whole how do I know it, the whole courses or everything that a lot of the things being offered here in Nigeria, they are not keeping up with the times or they are not directly tailored to solve the problems in society. So the reason why education in Nigeria is, I think the main reason why many of all these issues still persist, like the first issues that I made mention of, they persist is that a lot of people see education in Nigeria as totally useless. For them, there is no gain to education at all. So I think that now is a major part of why they don't want to be invest or why they don't see a reason to really put an effort into really bringing the education forward. For them, they just feel like, Education does not lead to success. If you want to be successful, you have to do business or probably you have to do any other thing. Mm -hmm. But education mm -hmm. now does not make money. Thank so, you. I think that that is that is a very very that is a very very bad thing. So that that is what is that is killing that is what is killing education now in Nigeria. Lack of interest, lack of real interest in the sector. Okay. People just want to send their children to school so that they go, they come out, they get their results, blah blah blah, they get a job or whatever. So I think that that is that is so if everybody now, if the whole the majority of society people in society, okay. that is what they, they just feel like okay, you go to school, you get your degree or whatever, or your OND, your H and you come out then either you get a job or you just find something else to do. So for everybody 
to education is not gainful. Okay. And that 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 now is even the main problem of education in Nigeria. This is the main problem. Very beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so if this is the main problem in Nigeria, like you watching right now, understand that the Elon Musk you have today set up his business without the help of the government. So you watch right now, you have a role to play. That's the simple truth. The WWE McMahon set up his business without the help of the government. Now his business is bringing respect to the country. They have WrestleMania today. So you watch it right now. Don't blame, just don't blame the government. Okay, we know they are misbehaving. The government always want to steal. The government always wants to loot public funds. That's none of your business. If they loot it, <laughs> they are still gonna put it into circulation. So you focus on bringing something like that's gonna bring respect to the country and to your own name. Think about what you do for your country. Like if you approach life in that way, you won't have time for your government. Rather, right? you'll be changing things. You'll be doing what your government ought to do. And when you do this all the time, like you will be the light to your government. And when your government see the light, they're likely gonna follow. So what do you have to say? Can I tell you one truth? The thing is that <laughs> governments don't just come to be, they don't come out of thin air. Governments in Nigeria are actually chosen from among the people. <laughs> so it is what the people like, what is generally being accepted in society, that mm. is where that is what a lot of times the government seems to reflect. The government reflects the way or the direction that the people is pointing at. So let's say the reason why a lot of these horrible governments or bad governments or governments that are not up to the job take charge is because they see no reason to. A lot of the things that they do are generally accepted in society. Or a lot of the things that they say or a lot of the policies they pursue mm. are what are already accepted in society. So if you want to change a country now, a lot of more, it's not the government. You change the people, you change the government. Yeah. The people pick the government. Yes. So if, you, if we want good government in Nigeria, the people need to change because it's from among the people that government get elected. So for us to best change, we need to begin to look at the situations in the country and begin to find out okay, what is wrong. We need to reevaluate everything going on in the country. Look at all our policies, our customs, tradition, all the laws. We need to look at everything, okay? Does this particular thing actually make sense? Is this thing viable or not? So, until enough people in society, in our society today, begin to take charge of, okay, yes, this thing needs to change, or this thing has to be done, or so, so, these things should not be done, only then can society improve. Again, the action of one person cannot just change it, but yes, and in the, individuals have roles to play, they have an important role to play, because your action as a person, why it might not necessarily change the sentiment of society and people, could inspire other people, and those people could inspire other people, gradually to it, that, that change could become infectious, and let's say if these people keep up their good work, society could be changed. So, again, we as individuals, we have an important role. We have to put a positive outcome. But for you to best play that role, you need to understand that, okay, there are problems in society and say, okay, how can these problems actually be solved? You might, you as a person, you might not have the solution to the problem again. But it still be the government because, again, the government has access to lots of resources. So, you now, you need to just understand the problem. Try to even from your own way, even though you don't have resources to solve the problem, you try to get an idea. Then if you get an idea of how the problem could be solved, tell it to somebody, tell it to your friends, tell it to your family. Then again, if those also understand and they keep on passing on this message, eventually if there's enough people pushing for change or pushing for resolution of the particular solution, the government will eventually succumb and changes will actually be made. So the problem with society today is that we say we know the problems. But nobody's interested in finding out the solution. That is just the problem. That is that is the main problem. There are problems in society, yes, probably power outages, shortage of this, shortage of that, there's inflation, high prices, there's poor education, there's almost everything in the country is <laughs> Everybody knows the problem. But the solution
solution now. Not enough people are ready to really pursue the solution, and not enough people are ready to accept the solution. So until these changes are, until these things, <coughs> only will accept all these things, the government will continue to be bad because it's from us that people will get elected. Okay, okay. But well, I wish to add this. I say like, if you don't be the change you wish to see, you're doing yourself. Okay, because obviously this is my stuff right now. If I get fat enough in it, I can build it to a big company. Then I, I sell my digital books worldwide. Sometime from now, you're not gonna you know people watching me might be seeing me on a very in a different level. Why I change my mindset and I'm watching on myself. Like if you are if you are being the change you wish to see, you are doing this for your own good. Okay, so if you choose not to really to live anywhere, you're not hurting the government, you're hurting yourself and your future. Yeah. So you watching right now, like if you are self um development oriented, like just hit the subscribe button. But if you are not, don't just bother, okay? Because you will end up unsubscribing later. Okay, so don't just bother. Okay. Um okay, because what was really really surprising me, um uh, well, let's say um I'm trying to attract my attention is like in different countries right now, like let's say the US for 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 example, it's a capitalist um so, um, um society. Now in the US, uh, it's capitalism. They are actually practice there. I think so. But no society is hundred percent capitalist and stuff like that. But the US is mainly dominated by private um, ownership of businesses here and there. But um, if the US is rich today, I think. It's because of the individuals, right? And if it's because of the individuals, then um, I think if people should take their attention off the government. If they can do that for once, their brain will start to think. Someone once said, in a, I watched a podcast, the person said, he said, we don't care about the economy. Whether the economy is bad or good, all we need to do is raise our values. Raise our value, value we give to customer, raise it all the time, money is always going to flow in. Raise it all the time, money is always going to flow in. So those people right now are in control of their life. They are in control of the, the amount they earn. But if you keep blaming the government, you are a victim. And being a victim does, does, does no good to yourself. Being a victim affects you, it doesn't affect the government. The government is the government. They will keep getting their millions every year. Okay, <laughs> so if you are changing right now, if you are say like I want to change right now, it is for your own good. But the problem here is I think many people want it too fast. Get your plans. Okay, keep going for it. But understand that you can't speak, you can't learn Arabic in two months. If you've never been exposed to Arabic before, you can't learn it in two months. So give yourself some time. Okay, as you are also going through the process, but I have a plan. Okay, if obviously if you have a plan, you are gonna end up anywhere life push you to. So um, that's really cool right now. So education in Nigeria, hmm, that's a, that's a really big one. So let's talk about how to choose a career right now. So how do you choose a career? If you were to advise whoever is watching right now, but that this is a major problem. I had a conversation with a friend of mine when I went to Tom Preet for jam. I saw someone attended the same school, right? So the person said, they like he has been confused to what to choose. Like, <laughs> what to choose. They said, they said this problem has not been solved in Nigeria. Like, they've not, they've not yet put a particular, like, a standard, a standard upon which students can follow to actually get, the, choose the right, the right job or the right career. Because, you know what Tim Grover said? Tim Grover is a trainer of Kobe Bryant. He said, the advice he gave, he said, it's not just about getting into sports. He said, it's about choosing the right sport. Kobe chose the, chose the right sport. Michael Jordan chose the right sport. Michael Jordan, those guys brought respect to basketball. Even if you don't want to watch basketball, you want to watch uh, Michael Jordan. Right? They brought respect to what they're doing. Even boxing, Tyson Fury, they, brought, they bring respect to what they're doing. Why? Because they do it where they put their whole heart into it. So... Um, this problem right now of, um, I'm really lost right now, I'm trying, I'm trying to bring something in, okay, so let's talk about how to choose a career, okay, yeah, how to choose a career, so he it said it's about choosing the right sport, so imagine Michael Jordan chose football instead of basketball, like, would he be the great guy we know today, 
perhaps he might not um been as great as he is right now michael jordan was awarded by obama president barack obama gave him presidential award for like his dedication and the respect he has brought to basketball you know basketball is majorly in the u.s right so in that process he also brought respect to the country so like how to choose a career right now if you really have to choose a career it could be a life changer imagine those guys didn't have any way to choose the right sport like, where would they have been now we have a lot of footballers right ronaldo but ronaldo always always happened to be the best always have to be. some people are playing football just because of money Okay, I think it's something more than that. Ronaldo had another different kind of motivation. I've listened to him several times. He said it's not easy to be him, but he tries his best not to complain. And do and he do, just does his stuff all the time. So how to choose a career? Like what's your advice on that? How, like how to choose a career? We are in Nigeria, right? So you know the problems we face right now. So how do you advise the upcoming ones, the 15 year old children, the um, 14 that are coming up, like how do you advise? What do we always advise to, to them if they want to choose a career? Well, I think if you were in some countries around the world, picking a career is actually easier. But here in Nigeria, you <laughs> barely have enough options to choose from. <laughs> so here in Nigeria, how most of our careers are related, they are probably science, art, and social science class. Mm -hmm. so that, that is three, uh, that is like the basis of how a lot of people pick their careers in Nigeria. Yeah. So, most people, most people say, okay, probably I'm good at science, so I'm picking, I'm going to be a doctor, doctor. Or say, I'm going to be an Alive, engineer. Yeah. Usually guys say they are going to be engineers, mechanical engineers. Yes, guys. <laughs> so, or some girls, they go just say they are going to mass communication yes, or my business, or yes. so here in Nigeria it's almost like we have this limited pool of options yeah but in reality there's a lot of careers out there there's a lot of things like that. so if picking a career now it depends on what you are interested in but again you don't really know what you are interested in until you have probably learned a little about all the different fields so if you want to mm. pick a career you owe it to yourself now to really do your research. Okay, that's that true. Is, try to find out about all the possible different fields. Mm. Again, in Nigeria, again, since we basically have to choose which class we are going to either start, you have to be <laughs> here probably at SS1 level. But again, that is also not the determine, that should not be, that should not determine your career in life. Because yeah. most of the time people say, okay, I did bad at this in school, so I'm definitely going to be in that class. But if you actually put in more work, you could, be, you could actually do good in, yeah. school, in science courses. Or you say you hate literature right, because of how the teacher was it. You could actually go from, let's say, your science class, you could become an author, you could become a great author. Yeah. Right? So if you just say that, okay, you are just simply going to pick your career based on the subjects you learn in school, you are doing your great, yourself a great distance. Because now, we have not actually looked at all the possible options around. We have just looked at the ones that you saw people before you were teaching. And you are just basically following in line. So, in if you want to pick a career now, most people, when, even uh, in science classes, yeah, we basically just pick mechanical engineering, chemical, or blah, blah, blah. Mm. But those that the main ones still being encouraged in Nigeria, or most people pick based on prestige. And it feels that they will get from it. It's yeah, like we'll talk about that one. Doctors, just because they feel like doctors are well respected. Yeah. In Nigeria, doctors are this. Most people become, let's say, a going to petroleum engineering because they feel like they will get this form of heavy cash or mm. money. Yeah. And so, <laughs> then those are some motivations for some people picking careers. But in a sense, if you really want to pick a good career and you want to excel at it, you have to have interest in it, not just monitoring interest. Like your heart needs to, you need to, your curiosity now again to point you in that direction. That okay, you want to actually learn about this particular subject, like Kobe Bryant or say Ronaldo. For example. I think if they actually pick another sport that they like, they will actually succeed or they will even do well in that sport. Mm -hmm. Because it's not just picking the career; it's actually showing dedication to the career. So I think the reason why Kobe Bryant excelled in basketball was that. 
belt basketball. Mm. First of all, then he trained based on that his belt for the game. He actually dedicated himself to preparing for every game and to let's say trying to be the best or one of the best in that game. So it does again. It does not really matter the you can pick any career and still feel like that career, but there are other people succeed at it. If you look at uh, football, for example, now they are bad football teams or they are bad football players. Even basketball, they are bad basketball players. So if you want to succeed or if you are picking a career that okay, see that that person is succeeding in that career, so you too want to pick it based on that person's success, you are most likely to fail because that person is not just succeeding because of, let's say, they are talented. The yeah. person now has an interest in that career and they are pushing. Like Ronaldo now, you cannot tell that Ronaldo does not train or he does not try to push himself to do better at everything. He, he does, works harder than anyone. He works harder. In that particular field. Yeah. So if you want to pick a career, you need to do your research. Don't just look at probably what you are good at now. Look at what you could be good at in the future. Okay. For Brian, when he first started playing basketball, he was not that good. Yeah, he was worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was not that good. Yeah, so yeah, he, if he just looked at that, okay, I'm bad at, I'm not that good at basketball. Then stop. I'm not going to go into basketball. I'm good at, let's say, chemistry, so I'm definitely going to be a scientist. He's, I think it could have been a major loss for him. So, if you want to pick a career, don't just look at what you are good at now. Look at all the options and try to improve yourself so that you can be good at that particular field. Okay, let me cut in here. Let me ask a question. Okay, you know that we have this. Okay, let's assume this thing that helps you, this curiosity or interest that helps you to pick. Okay, now you you agree with me that let's say amateur right now, the indicator could go bad, right? And if the indicator indicator goes bad, if you try to measure current, it's not going to work, right? Now, what is that inner indicator? Like to tell you what you are interested in. What if that inner indicator is dead? What would you do? I think you would need you would need to bring this back to life. You have to do right? Wait, again, for you for you to really start your curiosity, you need to start learning. That is, you need to start actually pushing yourself to learn more. Because the more you learn, like I said, curiosity is an appetite. The more you feed it, the bigger it gets. So. You need to keep on pushing more ideas into your brain. So from those pool of ideas, your brain will now find, okay, I like this field more, or I like... Again, you must not even pick. Most people don't really have one field as their main career. Take Elon Musk, for example. Now. Okay. Elon Musk, you know, I think he was, I think he's an engineer. Mm. But he, he went to, he went to study business. Started. Yeah, he studied business and... Yeah. His businesses now are not really focusing on one just wants part of mm. science or engineering. Yeah. Like it's just one of some of the same business like PayPal for example mm. was a final uh, payment processor. It gets to yeah. You see mm. that the type of engineering they read and that type of <laughs> they are not related. Then from PayPal now you switched over to uh, mechanical engineering that is Tesla making cars. Yeah. Another of his company uh space space into making spaceships. Yeah. That is, uh, uh, let's say now it's probably even going to astrophysics or space time. Yeah. So again, you must not just pick a particular career and set it on it. You can have more than one career. You can be a generalist. Yeah, so okay. for you to, again, for you to be a generalist, you must push yourself to learn. You must go and learn more things. Okay. I think now this is it. I think probably when one year in school, I was just when I was younger, <coughs> my goal aim was okay. I'll be an electrical engineer. Simple. Why? Because I like how electric motors from toy cars then works. <laughs> but the more I learned, I started saying, okay, there's mechanical engineering. All of a sudden, I have an interest in it. I started reading books about it. Then along the line, I was a science student. I started seeing some particularly good literature. Then I said, okay, I'm going to be an author too. Then I read about this. I gained an interest in this thing. I read about that. So if you want to get interest in this, you need to read. To learn more, to look out more. I think even history, if you tell some people about history, some people are going to say that history is boring. But the more I learn about some history, the history of some particular things or people's society, I'm actually having more interest in them. Like my curiosity, I want to know more about that particular field. Okay. 
Okay. So if you want to kickstart your interest now, you need to learn more. That is the only way to really gain your interest. Okay. So if you just see that that okay, I am not going to learn uh, this this particular the career that I want is to just come to me automatically. You can pick anyone. That is just the thing. You can pick the ones that people around you are picking. That is why a lot of people in so in Nigeria today, most of them are basically almost picking the same course or the same particular uh, this thing. They are picking almost the same career. Yeah. A lot of people like computer science now. Okay. Most people they don't they don't pick computer science in schools because they feel like where will they work? Yeah. Or probably there's no prestige attached to it. Mm. Most people want prestige like white collar jobs where yes, you sit in front of the table you get a huge paycheck. But again, taking a career again, taking a career now is not just about let's say the successes that you have seen from particular people. You sometimes you could be picking a career in a field that has not been developed at all, where you live or anywhere else in the world. Like computer science now in Nigeria, there are very few real computer scientists in Nigeria. Yeah, but most true. people, since they don't know about it, they just be like, okay, if you read computer science, you are probably going to come out and go and open one small computer store. Mm. But <laughs> if you actually knew what computer science actually entails, you know that it goes beyond that. Again, this uh, software. That our phones are running now, they are used by computer scientists. Programmers have to code this, yeah. and they are not. It is not just common knowledge that they can just pick up. Can, that no. really takes time to learn and yeah. takes dedication. So it's a whole career and so, and it's very profitable. Take Facebook for example. Mark Zuckerberg now is a computer engineer yeah. or a computer scientist. He mm. builds Facebook. There is no way you will tell me that Facebook is not profitable because he is now worth over hundred billion dollars. So most people now they basically pick careers based on people that they see succeeding in that career or probably the prestige that they see people in those careers getting. But now I think you owe it to yourself to really do your own research to learn more, to really guide yourself as to which careers or which careers to pick. Okay. Okay, that's a brilliant one. Another brilliant one, okay? Uh, but before we pause, so you, you have some time for yourself before we continue again. Um, but I wish to say this. I think there's difference between you watching right now, if you're watching right now on YouTube or anywhere, if you're watching, just pay attention here. There's difference between you. I always say this, when you invent something, it's your duty to make that thing succeed. Like, I think this is a problem with many Nigerians. When they invent something, they want the government or some kind of help to make that thing succeed. Like when you invent something, it is your duty to make that thing succeed. So many people find it hard to make that thing succeed because they don't possess the mindset that they need to actually make that thing succeed. Check for instance YouTube. When it was created, the people had like they invented it, right? They were the one who, who tried to failure different kind of things to make that thing succeed facebook the same thing and every other stuff like uh, many people need to understand this like when you bring something out you you are the one that should make that thing succeed okay so not the government not your family members if they want to assist you is their choice if they don't want to assist you is also their choice too so uh, when you invest something, like try and work on your mindset, try and develop yourself, develop how you think, develop your perception, like work on all those things, strengthen yourself, and, and you will see that thing you invent, eh? you will see it becoming successful, you will see it really, really, really becoming successful, really, really becoming successful, so that that's it right now. I think we have, I think we have many ideas that are let's see. After it gets, let's say you have an idea, after you get a working, let's say a slightly working version of the idea, many people just give it up for them. They feel like, okay, from this stage, somebody should come and invest more or probably they are handing over control of the project to God knows who. So many people fail to go beyond that first stage of innovation. Yes, creating a final product is hard, but the thing is that. Let's say you want to invent a new smartphone, and then all of a sudden, out of spare parts, you manage to couple together a 
working prototype. So most people now end their ideas die at that test prototype because they fail to go beyond that test stage. So taking it, your idea beyond that test stage, there's no, there's very, very, there's very few people that will actually want to invest into something that you just made from scratch. So again, you owe it to yourself to really go beyond that first draft of your idea to so try to refine your idea. So the more you push, there's a certain stage where you get your idea to the investors that probably you were looking at that will come and invest, probably bigger investors will even come. So, yeah. But if you leave your idea as scrap, just take it as this. It's almost certain that the scrap investors will have looking to take advantage of the idea that will come in. So you owe it to yourself to push beyond that just stage of innovation. Okay, so you listen right now. Listen, it takes just two seconds, five seconds to change your life. And like I always say, skyscraper, you don't build this in one night. It takes time for you to build a skyscraper. So you better start doing some legitimate things right now. Do it. Just go gradually, gradually, gradually. If you need to become tougher, like become tougher. If you need to become smarter, become smarter. If you need to become stronger, become stronger. Whatever you need to work on, work on those things and keep going. So, um, but you just wait for some minutes. We're running up right now. Let me just um, bring in some quotes as you relax. We're just taking a break here right now. We're not gonna cut off. So, number one, I said, um, I'm going to Flores Chadwick right now. Um, she was the first woman to swim the English Channel. I mean, she broke a record. She said something, she said, you can't break a record. Like, you can't break a record when you don't keep a record. Okay, you can't break a record when you don't keep record. This happened to me in my first jam. I always check who is who is scoring the highest score. I always want to know. <laughs> so you have to like learn to keep some record. So you have some things in mind that you want to break. You can also use this in your career. Like if you are going for a particular course, check some achievements there and try to see if you if you'll be able to break some kind of record there set by people and that that's that's also important now according to sarah otterbach she said if you destroy the negative the picture can never be developed okay then fear is the dark room where all our negatives are developed okay um when you try to please everybody you will lose your eye Okay, just listen up so fast. You can have the most expensive car on the on the road, but if you don't know how to take the wheel or apply the brakes, it will never get you to where you need to go. Our actions are dedicated, are dictated not by sense of purpose, but by need to please. You worship idols when you dedicate your life to impressing people instead of obeying God. George Muller was known for his extraordinary faith. Fear makes you find yourself in a state of near panic, confronted by old adversaries you've already conquered. Many people have conquered certain things in their lives, but they find those things coming back again. Why? Because of fear. Because of fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear this thing might happen to you. Fear that thing might happen. So this is really, really good. Like, um, you can play it over again um, if you miss any, anyone. So we'll resume it right now, battery. <laughs> Now, the last thing we have here is science and religion. So what do you think? Are these two things rivals? Let me come in. Before you come in, there is a guy called Galilee Galileo. Everybody, everybody knows him, right? The guy who proved that every object and light object will fall at the same time. Everybody knows that man. The man was, was, was a very dedicated person in the church. Okay, it was a, it was a Christian. So, but you know what? Being a Christian didn't stop him from doing his science. Okay, he was a Christian, but still did his science. Okay, and now he's known well. He's well known worldwide for his uh, um um great achievements. So, um, let's talk about science and religion right now. So, uh, where where do you think? People are getting it wrong, and where do you think people are not actually getting it wrong? Like, are those two things rivals? They are not really rivals. Religion, by definition, religion is simply people's belief and the particular, uh, the particular activities they use to carry out their beliefs. Why science is the process of making inquiries about everything in the environment. So science is about learning. Religion is based on belief. So science 
and religion, they are not really contrasting each other. I think, in a way, science is, if you are a Christian now, you believe that the whole universe was created. Yes. So, say most scientists believe that it came about through the Big Bang Theory. That is true. Collision. Blast. But the thing is that, you as a Christian now, you believe that it was created. You don't know how it was created. Yeah. But that is just the thing. Science now is trying to figure out how, or science trying to explain how. A physical way, yeah, we can understand how, how the thing happened. The way it was created. So, mm. you, most Christians now, once they hear about sense so topics like those, they won't fight. Topics, like science is trying to override their yeah. beliefs. But science now, science simply, science is just people trying to know about what is happening in the society, why things happen, and how they happen. So most people once they bring up particular subjects, they just try to go into overdrive and be like, this person is trying to override our belief in this particular yeah. thing. But if you actually look at it, if I ask you as a person, can you ask, do you know how the universe was actually created? You cannot tell me. You simply be, you believe that it was created. Yeah, we don't, don't know how. how it was created. So finding how so does not change anything. Finding how does not destroy so, anything. Exactly. The how now is what science is about. Okay. So, uh, why religion is the why and okay. the when, basically. Okay. So science simply wants to know how it was created. So for most people now, they most of the times they don't really understand their own religion to mm. really look at. They just feel like if you are for science, you are not for God. That's yes, that's that's the, the problem. But you think that science is basically there's no you can there's no way that you can deny a lot of the fact, many of the facts and science have actually brought up like gravity for example mm. science did not invent gravity yeah. science just simply explains gravity that. electricity for example it was not invented uh, yeah. by science it was explained yeah, by explained. science but most people now they, they try to I think based on their own mindset yeah. they, 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 they feel like but there are certain things that there's no way when electricity was first discovered, most people thought that it was witchcraft based on the way it was because they had never seen it before. Yes. So for most people, they now feel like science is not trying to take away the power the glory of mm, religion. religion. But that is not science is simply trying to explain many of the things we see and interact with in our society or in our environment. Okay, let me cut in there. You said something. Science is not taking the glory of religion. Religion is religion, okay? So, science is not actually doing anything harmful to it. So, people who are thinking, hey, if this guy is a science person, then he must be kicking against religion. If this guy is a religious person, then he must be kicking against science. Like, these two things are actually going on. I'm speaking in general terms now. So, science is not taking the glory of religion. Science is just trying to find out how. Just trying to find out how and trying to find out how how to make money go round how to uh, solve our problem of going having to go um, um, with the horse from one, one place to another or trying to trek long distance like trying to find out how um, how to stop other stuff has helped in uh, man creating vehicles right and different stuff so the how that science is all about has done like some good to this world has done great things to this world has led to, to many inventions and different stuff so science is all about how and trying to find out how or trying to know how it does not affect anything and does not destroy anything and about two, your belief is your belief for instance if you believe something right now um according to neuroscience uh it tells us that Every thought held long enough, long enough in your head produces a feeling. And if you repeat the says, but a circle of certain kind of thoughts all the time, all the time, it forms a belief. Now, if some people hear this stuff now, it's as if I'm trying to take power from them. Like they also attach knowledge. Like many people, many religious people are against knowledge. Can you talk about that? I think if you as a religious person, you are against knowledge. I think. You are, you are just simply fooling yourself because our God is not 
Even the Bible in Proverbs, but, God said, wait, let me just cut in. God said in Proverbs, if you read Proverbs very well, he said, uh, the, the eyes of the Lord consistently search for knowledge. But I don't understand where people are actually picking this their stuff from. Even the Bible, check it very well. Proverbs said, the eyes of the Lord search for knowledge. Lack, lack of knowledge. knowledge. They don't and think about that one. Another part, another part is that in all your gettings, get wisdom. Yeah. You say get knowledge and understanding. Standing. So, in a way, science now, most people, they are, I think, they are really, I don't know how they view science, but science, you, you basically starting a fire with firewood as a science. Yeah. You just let that like, rub two sticks together. Friction will cause the material. That's, to go that's, that's the fire. science. So that's the sense. You basically, how will I put it? Almost everything. So, even you're a religious person, you're also a scientist. Like, everyone is born to be natural scientists. The Bible now, Everybody. The Bible was made possible by knowledge. Yeah. It's <laughs> knowledge. Even the writing, the, the way we write our. Everything was made possible by knowledge. Yeah. Somebody invented the alphabet. Yeah. The ink that we use to print or to write was yeah. invented. <laughs> the Bible was invented. The clothes we wear, it was invented. So if you say you are trying to override science, not possible. But science now is just simply a, uh, like a way of making inquiry about the processes by which things happen, why they happen when they happen and how they happen. So you cannot re- science now is not science is not basically a thing. Science is just basically a study. Yeah. And you are learning about things in this like, Okay, now it's not, like, not something kind not of like this entity, entity. Or, yeah. <laughs> it's just you are studying about things going okay. on around. Science is still so you it's studying. Way. It's not an entity you are trying to save. It's science is you yeah. studying, it's still you studying, searching. So it's not an entity you're trying to save. So if you're watching right now, yeah. try to disconnect. That's what many people think science is a kind of different entity. So just try and disconnect that. In a way, religion says it's science. Yeah. Because if you, you say, as a Christian, you're supposed to learn about God, you're supposed to learn about Jesus Christ, and about. That's inquiry. Things, about yeah. Everything. So now that is the study of this particular religion. So in a way, religion says it's a science. On the yeah. So, religion now cannot override science. No, can because religion now, since we believe that everything was created, science is trying to explain oh. how things work in reality. So, most people, they just try to use religion to pass off, I don't know if it's their own mindset or ignorance mm. or denial. But then, when they see that, okay, when they see this particular thing, they go that, okay, let's say they think this thing is impossible, then science makes it possible. Go like this, yeah. so be careful. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think there was this particular time years ago when there was this set of fake propaganda books circulating mm-hmm. around in schools here where they said cartoons came from the devil, like Benten, Benten. 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 that time. They, they were setting that the devil, yes. come from the devil. But in reality, they did not come from they just came from the minds of people. Mm. So most people, I think they try to pass off things that they don't believe in. Uh, Standard. Science is trying to like it's from the devil. Anything that they don't believe in or they don't think is possible. And science makes it possible. Or someone read to make it possible. They think that thing is from the devil. Okay. (laughs) So there's something a known thing in uh, psychology. It's called argument from ignorance. So according to quotes now, argument from ignorance. Meaning, if back then, meaning if something happens right now. You as a human being, you can't just admit that you don't know anything about it. You you likely gonna try to explain it in setting some way or the other. So that's what um, argument from ignorance is all about. For instance, let's say back then the thunder strike. You try to just give an explanation. So that's that's what um, it's called argument from ignorance. So most of um, the things that we now know come from this argument from ignorance. Okay, and you have some beliefs, right? When you pull your teeth, you pull it around your head for seven times, right? Then you try it <laughs> and all that stuff. So many of like our society has been built on this argument from ignorance. So that's the main problem. 
Yes, so science right now tries to tries to discover and through that process <laughs> and through that process it tries to prove certain argument from ignorant ideas wrong. So uh, many people take it upon themselves like if this thing if science has proven this thing to be wrong, then um, science must be something else. So I don't think that's true. I think you should understand if you're watching understand that most of our things we know okay are coming from this argument from ignorance. Okay. Um, you know, you know the, I think you know the problem with most of these people again they are viewing science as an entity. Yeah, that entity, entity that problem is the process of you trying to learn <laughs> the process of learning about the particular thing. Science does not really exist because what is what is science? Who can you point out of hey, what is science? This is science. <laughs> There's no such thing as that. So science now is simply the process of you learning about the particular thing. Like learning about electricity. When uh, the best uh discovered electricity it was through uh thunder clouds. Mm. Uh, you see what is this guy's name? Something Franklin what in his Benjamin Franklin you kite in the sky then he captured he was able to capture some uh, electricity in a jar mm. the kite so most people then even a lot of Christians he was a Christian yeah a lot of Christians opposed him many even many many even Galilee Galilee yeah. when Galilee Galilee discovered that the because the, the church back then the history when you read this very well the church was also trying to explain things around too and uh, they were still trying to do some science too but just like two soldiers like this one wants to show is superior than this one so i think that's 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 what is happening and he says let me just if i forget it he said um Gali Gali, because the church was saying that the earth was the center of the universe the Emmanuel copernicus proved it wrong at first but they threatened to stone him to death Okay, to show how rigid they were. So Galilee and Galilee, Galilee will discover again that the, that the sun is the center of the universe. The church was not ready to accept the correction. So they were really, really rigid. They said if he tries it again, it's a, just Google it. You see the story. They said they are going to stone him to death. Yeah, yeah, so and he actually retracted. That form of <laughs> that, again, the Bible did not tell the church that. Yeah. I think it's self they, they developed it from by them by their own since their own selfish their some people's selfish interests, some selfish people. Now it generally accepted solution. The Bible did not The Bible did that. not so do that. Again, they were they were not just basically using religion to like back themselves up. Yeah. On that their own belief. The Bible did not tell them that. Didn't. So that's why most people, most scientists don't really go into they try to stay away from religion. Yes, because, because of the people. Religion. They think the Bible is the source. Try to pass off their own beliefs as the general belief of yeah. the particular religion. They say, I think that this is what the Bible is saying. Yeah. Like, they don't know. I don't really have any, any, anything to prove it to. Yeah, but well, I just. I look around and I see that basically everywhere around me is basically flat. I go and start spreading it, telling people around. They too, they don't. A lot of people don't really have a way to prove it, but yeah. we just suddenly reach conclusion that since we cannot prove it's not flat, it's flat. So again, what what is a lot of people now accept that idea. Anybody that not comes in to <laughs> now say that okay, that person is trying to go against our belief. Yeah. But a lot of times it is the Bible. A lot of things that for a church is then pushed as, as let's say Christianity, but not actually Christianity. Yeah. <clears throat> resolution that a lot of the leaders in those churches they reached and they say okay this thing this is what we believe in so this is what we have seen so this is our conclusion from the matter they did not actually have real concrete evidence to really push their idea forward yeah. so science now brought conclusions brought evidence that okay these are the calculations or these are the facts so they did not thought that those things were not trying to approach their own let's say you are a pastor, for example, mm. and you keep on preaching that the earth is flat. So everybody has not seen that, okay, since you are a pastor, it means it's correct. In a way, it all means, in like, it means God told you. Yeah, example. it's God and the is flat. <laughs> if somebody that comes and tells, says the earth is flat, try to oppose God to them. It's like that person is trying to prove 
God rule. God rule. Okay. <laughs> That's that's really that's really the problem. That's really the problem. So uh, I don't know if you watch it right now. We have actually solved a big problem. If you if you if you watch it right now, I'm sure you're more you like we have solved a big problem. Science is not an entity at all. Science is you going for that, it's you making inquiries. Everyone does that. Everyone you do science, right? Like it's all not. You walk, that's a science, right? If friction helps you to work, you wear your clothes, that is science. So everyone is a scientist on one level or the other. So I think that's enough to actually um, bring something good into your life. Okay, so um, this is obviously for Jam Bites. If you want to write down this year, I have a group, Students Motivation Group, and some other teachings will be given to the group. Like this is to keep you in shape, okay, to help you stay. Uh, motivated and do the necessary things you need to do if you are a student. If you want to join that group, link in the description for price and everything. So um, that is good. So before we go right now, we are ending this show right now. Like I am so so happy for this stuff being possible. Like I want to, I wish to add this to everything we've talked about right now. When you are, when you find yourself in a difficult situation, you are there. So you solve a particular problem and use that thing or the experience you gather to teach the world a huge lesson that only you can teach. So when many people don't understand this really well, so when they find themselves in difficult situation, like the situation is difficult because of how you perceive it. Okay, if you can change your perception about anything, the thing you look at starts to change. In quantum physics, it says if you change how you see something, the things you look at starts to change. Something happens to if you change how you see it, the thing you look at will start to change. So, and uh, uh, we start to change because you are going to react to the thing in a different way. You are going to try to approach the thing in a different way. That is how the thing is going to change. So, there is, there, there is this story I want to talk about. Brahili. You know this thing that blind people used to read? There is this big thing here. Yeah. You know that guy was a blind person? Right. It, I think it was not actually blind at first. I think something happened when I went to fight war or something, if I'm not getting the story very well. Then I think he got shot in the eyes, something like that that led to his blindness. So he used that kind of motivation to actually like help blind people. Like this is how blind people are, like they must be suffering. So he tried to use that motivation to actually invent something that will help like that will help reduce the stress. On, on, on the blind and that is the thing you talk about what is letter of Braili something that blind people used to read they named it after him it was a human being too so like if I himself in a situation but he didn't use it as a reason to do something stupid he didn't use it as a reason to smoke he didn't use it as a reason to do something else he used that thing um, he used his experience to teach the world or to do something that only him was able to do no one has no one was able to do it before him so if you are in this situation right now you are there for a particular reason your experience is unique to you too so when you're going through something don't try to generalize like it's unique to you use your experience to do something great friends this is all we have for the show of today okay graduate camera is off right now and we need to call it quits yeah we were almost rounding up okay so if you haven't watched the last podcast you can check the link in the description you can also share this video share it to someone else like this thing has helped you so share it to someone else share it to your group share it to your whatsapp status tell people to subscribe so they won't miss our next show my next show we'll be bringing out we bring it to someone else okay on my next show that's a mr daniel the one who taught me physics in my secondary school. So if you don't want to miss that one, or into the right now, you subscribe or buy my product. Buy my product, guarantee you are gonna see the next show. The next show might be out, but I might like hide the video. I might make it private for only my customers. So if you want to see more videos like this, then you have to be in my customers list.
Bye. Thanks and be legendary.